Summer accuses Claire of keeping a secret, and Alan floats a disturbing theory about Ashley's trauma. On today's episode of The Young and the Restless, tensions run high as Summer confronts Claire about hiding the truth regarding Jordan's survival. Claire admits she knew but wanted to respect Victor's decision to break the news. This revelation causes a rift, with Summer suspecting Kyle's motivations. Meanwhile, in Paris, Ashley grapples with Alan's theory that her traumatic memory might involve his sociopathic twin brother, Martin. With Claire's arrival stirring up emotions, and Kyle's unwavering support for her, Summer feels increasingly sidelined, fearing Claire's past could endanger her family's peace. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. After watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Summer accuses Claire of keeping a secret, and Alan floats a disturbing theory about Ashley's trauma. Today on The Young and the Restless Summer opens up to chance, Victor confronts Cole about his betrayal, and Kyle gets a grilling from Mariah. Cole drops into the tack house and wants to know how Claire's first day on the job went. Victoria says she's not there yet, but tells him she was practically bursting with excitement when she left. They're proud and agree it's a whole new chapter for all of them. At the Abbott Mansion, Kyle tells Claire she was great with Harrison today. Summer thanks her. Claire wants to know how the trial went. Kyle says she knocked it out of the park, and Summer says it's going well. Kyle tells Summer there's something she needs to know before Claire leaves. Jordan is alive. He explains she's at a maximum security facility. Summer gasps and says to Claire, you knew about this, didn't you? Claire admits she's known since this morning. She wanted to tell them right away, but Victor wanted to tell them and she respected her family's wishes. Kyle tells Claire she can go and to come back at the same time tomorrow. Summer fumes, one day. One day on the job and she's already keeping secrets that could change everything. Summer wonders if Kyle hid the news about Jordan from her because he was so determined to hire Claire. Kyle argues Claire had no involvement in her aunt surviving. What did she do? Pull her body out of the river? Hide her in a closet? Summer rants about him being condescending and mocking her. He apologizes, but this has nothing to do with Claire watching Harrison. Summer protests that it's the timing of it. She suggests they let Claire go now before their son gets even more attached. Kyle says, we're not firing her. You said yourself that our little boy is back to his sweet self. We're not taking that away from him. As Kyle storms upstairs, Summer fumes that it's not just his decision. She has a say in this too. Claire arrives at the tack house and greets her parents. She raves about her day with Harrison and says she's never had so much fun with caterpillars. They discuss the kid bouncing back from his ordeal, and Cole says she's part of his support system. Claire muses that Kyle said the same thing. Victoria figures Summer must have lightened up a bit. Claire says she's treating her more like an employee than a relative, and when she found out about Jordan, she accused her of hiding it purposely. Victoria offers to talk to her, but Claire doesn't want that. She goes on about Kyle being supportive and having great energy. He makes her believe she can do this. Cole twinkles, well, it sounds like you've made a friend. In the bar in Paris, Ashley asks Alan, why are you doing this to me? They sat there in that bar together and caught up. They had an in-depth conversation. I'm telling you right now, it happened. Alan has never been in this place. Tracy says maybe she's confused about the place. Ashley knows this is the place and even remembers the bartender. Alan doesn't think she's making it up. I think it happened exactly as you say, it just didn't happen with me. I believe you spent the evening with, uh, my brother. In Chancellor Park, Summer thanks Chance for meeting her and asks what he was able to find out about Jordan. 
Chance says what Kyle told her checks out and assures her the facility is taking extra precautions. Summer concedes that her grandfather would be complaining if they weren't. She turned to him instead of Victor for answers because he's one of Claire's biggest champions. Chance is on her side always. Summer tells him that means a lot to her. She stews, and Chance reminds her this is good news. Jordan's not a threat anymore. Summer says Claire knew Jordan was found and didn't say a word to them. Victor wanted to tell them and she respected that, but all she knows is that Claire is already keeping secrets. Jordan may not be able to hurt Harrison now, but the person she groomed now has direct access to her son. Chance asks if Claire's given her a reason to worry. Summer says no, she was perfect and upbeat and she hasn't seen Harrison that happy in a while. She's grateful, but no one seems to remember that Claire was also the perfect assistant to her grandmother before she tried to kill them all. She worries what might happen if Jordan reached out to her, but Kyle tells her she's overreacting. She feels like she was guilt into hiring Claire. That said, it's impossible to deny the connection Harrison and Claire have. She wants him to have that peace of mind, but she can't have the same peace of mind knowing the reason she agreed to hire Claire is part of why she wanted to say no. Chance asks Summer if she's jealous of Claire. Summer knows how stupid it is, but if she's honest, yes. She's his mom and has to make him brush his teeth and eat vegetables, while Claire is new and exciting. Chance understands the complicated feelings. Summer says Harrison was practically doing cartwheels when Claire showed up with brownies, so did Kyle, and she doesn't think it was about the treats. Chance asks if he should be worried she's jealous about Kyle too. Summer reassures him and they express how happy they are with each other. She admits that Harrison invited Claire to go on the Ferris wheel, not her, however. Chance realizes she's starting to feel like she's on the outside looking in. In the tack house, Claire heads upstairs and Cole remarks on how happy she seems. Victoria frowns, Kyle. I want Claire to make friends, of course, but I'm not sure he's the right choice. His relationship with Summer, they have a complicated history. Summer's not completely on board with Claire being the nanny, so she'll be at the center of the friction. Kyle's also not had the best judgment. He's been divorced more than once and dated that shark Audra Charles. Cole thinks Victoria is being a mom and maybe just a little overprotective. She's made a real friend and that's what she needs. Victoria knows he's right and promises not to worry anymore. When did you get so wise, she asks. Cole's just trying to be a good dad. Victoria tells him he's a great dad. Just then, Cole gets summoned by Victor to the main house and tells Vicky he'll check back in later. Kyle arrives at society and sits with Mariah and Tessa. They discuss the kidnapping and ask how Harrison's doing. Kyle says they've been lucky. They have lots of support and Sharon hooked them up with a child therapist. Mariah asks how Kyle is doing. Kyle only needs Harrison to be happy. He shows them a photo of the kids smiling and says Claire took the picture. Mariah and Tessa recall that she was kidnapped too. Kyle says that surviving together has bonded them. She's even his nanny. Mariah gops, she's what? She points out Claire's history. Kyle says that Harrison adores her and feels safe around her. Tessa asks if she has experience with children. Kyle says she's intuitive and has great energy. She's charming and it's inspiring to see how positive she is. Mariah and Tessa exchange a look. Mariah muses that it seems Harrison's not the only one who thinks Claire is special. Tessa trots off with a look and Mariah questions Kyle. I hate that I'm even saying this, but I feel for Summer on this one. As Aria's mom, she would want the best possible nanny for her, not someone whose aunt had just kidnapped her child. Kyle gets it. 
Mariah insists it's nothing against Claire, there are just a lot of qualified candidates other than someone trying to adjust to their new reality. Kyle, agitated, protests that he's gotten to know Claire. She's strong, honest, and has an intense desire to do the right thing. If he thought there was the slightest risk, he wouldn't push for this. Mariah asks, all of this admiration for Claire. Is there maybe something else going on? Kyle asks why she'd accuse him of crushing on the nanny and acts insulted. Mariah sincerely hopes that Claire is everything he said and a perfect fit for Harrison. Kyle says, she is. As long as Summer doesn't change her mind. At the tack house, Victoria grills Claire about Kyle. She's happy he hired her, but he's a complex guy. She'd like her to have friends outside of work. Claire's only focus right now is being part of the family and living a life she can be proud of. Claire wonders if she was overstepping when she asked her about her relationship with Cole. Victoria says she can ask her about anything. She hopes it's okay to ask Claire questions. Claire says of course. She feels, somehow, like she's known her for her whole life. Victoria says it's a mother-slash-daughter thing. Claire wonders if Cole stopped by to see her, or because he had a good excuse to see Victoria. Victoria blushes and says Cole came for Claire, but maybe a little bit for her. They worry about the impact of Jordan being alive on Nikki, but Claire feels strong and sure about the future. At the ranch, Cole tells Victor that Claire knocked it out of the park on her first day at work. He's sure that's not why he summoned him there. Victor wants to talk about his betrayal. Or do you think I'd forgotten? Cole argues he was protecting him and the family from what might have happened if Jordan had been discovered downstairs. Victor complains he followed him in his own home. You went behind my back. You were about to free Jordan. Cole argues they were going to put her in a maximum security prison. Michael and I were only trying to help. Victor says he's fired Michael Baldwin. Cole is sorry to hear that, but he can't fire him. Victor can tell him to stay away from his family and stay the hell away from my daughter. At Ashley's apartment, Alan explains that he wanted to leave the bar in case his brother showed up. This is a conversation he never wanted to have, but once Ashley told him what happened. My twin, Martin. He's a sociopath. Tracy notes this is not unlikely as it sounds. Ashley explains she was married to someone in that situation. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Alan's sorry to hear that and he's sorry his brother found his way into her life. He explains they're not close any longer. Martin has had sociopathic tendencies his whole life. When he was medicated he was sweet and he was proud of him, but off of them, he's full of angry. Ashley asks why he never told her he had a brother. Alan says they had a big falling out. They moved in together so he could keep an eye on him and got him a job. Ashley winces and holds her head as Alan describes Martin growing resentful and going off his meds. He became enraged and violent. Tracy and Ashley learn that Martin attacked him. He tried to put him in a facility, but he took off. It's been two years trying to find him, but he had to let it go. Tracy clucks that this must be so painful for him. Alan says since Ashley met him, it seems he's still around and keeping track of his connections. Ashley says he's keeping track of me. Tracy asks why he thinks his brother is keeping track of his connections. Alan explains that he left his phone at his house the week Ashley was in Paris and his brother must have got in and accessed his phone and contacts. Tracy says that would explain why Ashley spoke to him when she called Alan's phone. Ashley guesses her photo popped up on the phone and that's how Martin recognized her in the bar. Alan asks Ashley if she remembers anything more from that night. Frustrated, Ashley exclaims that she can't remember anything. Tracy asks Alan what he's thinking. Alan says that given what Martin can be like when he's off his medication, 
he believes something traumatic might have happened between him and Ashley last night. Ashley points out that she thought she was with Alan that night. Wouldn't she be afraid of him? Alan doesn't know. He supposes it depends what trauma occurred. Tracy says if they find that out, it will not only help Ashley, but it will lead Alan back to his brother. Today's next update. Here's how Audra and Chance team up on Young and the Restless. This is the power couple we've been waiting for. Chance showed up to talk Summer down about Claire and Harrison on the June 4th episode of The Young and the Restless. Spoilers also show that things heat up with Chancellor Winters tomorrow. Yesterday, Audra schemed to figure out how to take Glissade from Tucker. Two things are missing from the Chancellor Winters story. One is the presence of an actual Chancellor. Two is the presence of anyone who knows what they're doing. We think YNR could fix that in an intriguing way. I know what's mine. We're not saying that Lily and Devon aren't qualified to run Chancellor Winters because they're not Neil's biological children. That would be horribly offensive. What we are saying is that Lily and Devon aren't qualified to run Chancellor Winters because Chancellor is the majority stockholder. And neither one of them is a Chancellor. Neither is Billy. He seems to think he is because his mother once had an affair with the Philip Chancellor who built the company into a powerhouse. But he's not. Do you know who is Chancellor, though? Chance. He is the son of Philip III, who is the illegitimate child Jill had with Philip II. So who should be running Chancellor, rather than just kind of aimlessly wandering the halls, looking for something to do? Chance. Good as it gets. Alas, Chance doesn't know what he's doing. Not that it's a deal-breaker. Billy is incompetent, too. However, you know who isn't incompetent? Audra Izuleka Silver, who recently got engaged. Audra seems to know what she's doing, no matter the business. Even Sally came to her for advice. So Audra could run the company, no problem. Except she's not a Chancellor or a Winters. But is that really a problem for someone as good at overcoming as she is? Double your fun. Here's a simple solution. Audra seduces Chance away from Summer. Summer is obviously still obsessed with Kyle, and it seemed like Chance recognized that today. So how hard could the seduction be? And then Audra and Chance could take over Chancellor Winters together. He's the figurehead with the bloodline, and she's the brain behind the brawn. Everybody wins, especially the viewers. Today's next update. Martin strikes back, Ashley's Paris trip goes off the rails. The Young and the Restless spoilers for Thursday, June 6, reveal that fans will see more action happening in Paris now that Ashley Abbott is getting closer to the truth about her hidden trauma. There's a good chance Ashley's alters will make a last-ditch effort to protect her from what's buried, so Amiz Abbott, Belle, and even Ash, could make appearances. However, Ashley will remain determined to fight her alternate personalities off and uncover the real story. Of course, Tracy Abbott has promised to see Ashley through this crisis, so that's a promise she intends to keep. Alan Loran will also do whatever it takes to help Ashley unearth this trauma which relates to what happened the night Martin Laurent posed as Alan and met with Ashley. Alan's twin brother is an aggressive sociopath who spirals out of control when he's not on his meds, and he clearly isn't on them right now. Martin is still nearby in Paris since he had that run-in with Tucker McCall, so you can bet it won't be long until he resurfaces. YNR spoilers hint that Martin will inevitably strike back in some way so why and our viewers won't want to miss the trouble that's still to come. We know Tucker will try to take charge of a certain situation by the end of the week, so he could get dragged into all this Martin drama. If Tucker has another encounter with Martin, things could easily take a dangerous turn. Naturally, there's the potential for Audra Charles to land in some danger as well since she's also in Paris at the moment. Our predictions hint that there's a reason why Tucker, Audra and Ashley are getting this story collision, 
so we'll give you updates on how all the puzzle pieces fit together. The young and the restless spoilers say some shocking news is brewing no matter what, so don't miss Martin's next reign of terror. Today's next update. Lily is done with Billy. Mamie has bad news for Nate. The young and the restless spoilers for Wednesday, June 5th, return to the Chancellor Winter's offices for Lily to put her foot down over Billy's posturing, while Mamie feels the same about Nate. Over and done. Yes, Lily was once in love with Billy. And, yes, she once worked with Billy. But then Billy decided she didn't love him enough, she didn't appreciate him enough, and she didn't encourage him enough to be all he could be. You know, the same charges he threw Victoria's, Amelia Heinley, way before dumping her. Lily already had two adolescent kids. She didn't need a third. So she dumped Billy. And he made it clear he didn't need to work at any company. He was going to take over the world, through podcasts. Yeah, he hasn't mentioned grinning soul for a while now, has he? Billy is back in the corporate world now that his mommy has put him in charge at Chancellor Winters. Billy demands that Lily appreciate and encourage him the way he deserves. No matter what nonsense comes out of his mouth. Lily tried to be polite. But she's over it now. Listen to your elders. While Lily has to be polite to Jill, she is, after all, the one who made Lily CEO, Mamie has hated her old boss for years. And she enjoys reminding the world of that. Mamie also enjoys reminding Nate, Sean Dominic, that she's older than him, smarter than him, and better than him, at everything. He might think he's got it all figured out. Mamie is here to point out that he doesn't. Beautiful boy. Nothing is more important to Chelsea and Adam than Connor and Judah Mackey, who shared this big BTS. They can think about nothing else, they can talk about nothing else, they can do nothing else. Chelsea needs to hear how wonderful she is every hour on the hour, and with Billy temporarily distracted by work, Adam will need to do all the heavy lifting there. So what will happen when Sally dares interrupt their parenting? Today's next update. Sally walks in on Adam and Chelsea, plus, business schemes. Things heat up in Genoa City. For the Wednesday, June 5th episode of The Young and the Restless, spoilers photos reveal that Sally isn't happy when she interrupts a moment between Adam and Sally. Plus, part of Chancellor Winters appears to be working on more business schemes. These images preview some dramatic moments in an episode you won't want to miss. Scenes from Genoa City Devin, Nate, and Mamie meet up at the Genoa City Athletic Club. They're very likely talking Chancellor Winters. What will Mamie think about Jill's health issues? Will she finally really try to bury the hatchet, or is Mamie working to see her vision of family at the company? It looks like Mamie will stand her ground. Meanwhile, Sally, Courtney Hope, interrupts a moment between Chelsea and Adam. The exes have certainly been there for each other as they navigate Connor's mental health problems. Will this cause issues for Adam and Sally? It does look like Sally continues moving into Adam's place. She has a box, and he takes it from her. She also has some luggage packed up. They hug, but Sally doesn't seem to be all that thrilled. Check it out in the slideshow below. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.